This is Tell with Oshawa Bushcraft. Today we're discussing a topic that has been requested of me many times over the years, and that is the Canadian Forces sleep system. I did a lot of research in the preparation to make this video, and in the process of doing that, I came to appreciate that this sleep system is amazing. I'm gonna ask that you guys bear with me on this and that this is a camping and bushcraft channel and that I'm producing this for the person that wants to buy a bag at a surplus store and use it. This is not a military history channel. So I hope the historians out there don't try to hold me to, for, to some of the facts and dates. Through my research, I discovered that the earliest versions of this sleep system came into service in the late 1960s and it has remained in continuous service for more than half a century to the point it is still issued today in 2021. Some of the reasons that this system stayed in service for so long was that the Army had the foresight to design it as a general purpose system, intended to be issued to every soldier in the Army, and you could send them anywhere in the world and it would work. It might not be perfect for every environment, but it would work. Most of this is accomplished because the system is modular. You can pick and choose the pieces you want to use for the environment you're in. Another benefit of that modularity is that individual pieces can be replaced when they're damaged without having to replace the whole system, which is quite expensive and individual components can be upgraded when new generations of equipment come along. And that's helped keep this system in service for as long as it has been. I was issued one of these when I was in the army and I lived in it for weeks at a time. In that time, I completed extreme cold weather survival training and Arctic warfare training. Uh, I'm not an expert on the entire length of their service. Uh, before 1980, I had trouble finding a lot of information. And in the last 10 years, I've been out of the army. I don't have a lot of information in that time. I have collected as many pieces of this system as I could find to show you guys today, sometimes including multiple examples of the same piece of gear from different generations. If any of you are veterans and have information you feel I missed in this video, especially about the equipment prior to 1980 or after about 2010, uh, please include it down in the comments section. Although I have to ask you guys to please watch your language. That's enough talking for now. I'm gonna move the camera around. I'll get some gear out. We're gonna start looking at this stuff up close. So let's say you head on down to your local army surplus store and they're advertising Canadian army sleep systems, maybe as a, a four or a five or a six piece set. And you go ask about it. They got a bin or a shelf full of these packed up in the valise or the sleeping bag carrier. First point to make is don't just pick one of these up and take their word on it and walk out with it. You don't know actually what's in the bag if, they, if it's the right components or what condition they're in. You're spending a fair bit of money on this. Make sure to pull all the parts out and have a good look at them. When you pull your sleeping bag out of the carrier, this is what you should find. There's some more pieces to this system, but this is really the meat and potatoes of it. We're gonna start here. Now you're gonna to wanna to inspect all of these components to make sure they're in good shape. You don't wanna spend your hard earned money on junk. The pieces we're looking at here are the sleeping bag liner, the sleeping bag inner, the outer, the hood, and then the carrier that we already saw. We're gonna start by looking at the sleeping bags themselves. Uh, these are made of nylon. Some people call them a mummy bag because they have a collar that does up around the neck. Some people call them a rectangular bag because they don't have a, a fitted foot box. They have a square foot box. You can call them whatever you want. The bags themselves are nearly identical to each other in all the dimensions, including the weight, except that the outer bag is about two inches wider to accommodate the inner bag going inside it. You can identify these bags by a tag at the top of the draft tube. Should those tags be missing, you can also identify them that the inner bags has tie outs on the outside where the outer bag does not. As I said before, this system was modular. So these pieces could be replaced as they were damaged or as they wore out. So these bags will not be serialized to one another. They didn't come as a set. So you could have two different bags from two different decades. That's totally fine. So you're gonna to want to inspect these bags before you buy them. Uh, the tag is a good place to start. Uh, there's usually a production date on there. There is no golden age when better bags were made, but generally you're going to want to find the newest bag, newest bag you could find. So as you're inspecting the condition of these bags, you're looking for stains or rips or old repairs. You also want to look at these zippers and make sure they're working good. Uh, these zippers are brass. They're very tough. They're YKK zippers, but they do get damaged and replacing a zipper is way more expensive than you think it would be. If they have a selection of sleeping bags and you get to pick through it, you wanna choose the one in the best condition. Uh, big things you're gonna be looking for is the condition of the nylon in general. If it's new, it should be a brighter shade of green and it should be pretty shiny. If this bag's been washed a million times and has a lot of miles on it, it's gonna be a very dull color. You also wanna have a good look at the condition of the down. Uh, you want these bags to be as lofty as possible if they're gonna be warm. If they've been uh, stored poorly or washed poorly or not washed enough, uh, your, your down is gonna be very flat. It's gonna be clumpy. You feel around in here, you can feel balls of down clumped up. You probably want to avoid a bag like that too. The sleeping bag liner was sometimes known as the flannel liner, although it was just made of cotton. 
And its purpose wasn't so much to make the sleeping bag warmer, but it was to keep it clean. Uh, this is very easy to launder, whereas a down sleeping bag can be very difficult. When buying one, again, check it for stains and rips. Make sure it's all in one piece and give a good tug on it. Some of these got washed like a million times and they were literally just falling apart. There was nothing left of them. So I already mentioned that those sleeping bags do not have an attached hood on them. They have a detached hood, which is a little bit rare in the industry. Uh, this was known as the sleeping bag hood and is actually an awesome piece of gear. So just like the liner, this is made removable. So this is easy to launder without having to launder the whole down bag. These were made with a nylon shell with a synthetic insulation and a cotton liner. Made them easy to wash and made them comfortable. This particular hood was made by the Woods Bag and Canvas Company in October of 1981. Uh, it's worth mentioning that historically every piece of this system is made in Canada, most of it in Toronto. The hood obviously goes over your head as shown. It's just secured with some Velcro around the neck and a little Velcro tab at the bottom. Uh, there's also elastic bands that go under your armpits. Uh, make sure to look, make sure these are there. They, they're commonly stretched out or ripped off or cut off. Make sure they're in good shape. Uh, the hood is actually a really great piece of gear. It does its job well and it was favored by the troops. Uh, it's simple, it's comfortable. Uh, it gets most of its efficiency just by covering so much surface area. It covers your body all the way down to here and those sleeping bags would do up to your neck. It prevents any drafts from getting in. I would really hope that this part's self-explanatory, but if I don't show it, I'm sure somebody's going to ask. Uh, this is how you assemble the sleep system. You start off with your outer sleeping bag. And observe the zipper for the outer is on the right. This would be your right shoulder. Your inner sleeping bag slides inside of that. Now, its zipper is on the left. Once that's in place, You add your sleeping bag liner. The opening for the liner will also be on the left to line up with the inner. Your last step is to put on the hood and get inside the sleeping bag. Before I move on to talk about air mattresses, there's a couple of quick points we should cover. Uh, obviously, you guys want to put down a tarp or a ground sheet before you pull your sleeping bag out. Don't do it right on the snow. Uh, I did that on purpose so that it gave some contrast with the green equipment so you guys could see what I was doing. Uh, another point is you might find some weird variants of this. Uh, if guys were allergic to goose down, there was a different sleeping bag the Army would provide them and you might find one of them. I've never even seen one. They were very rare. Uh, also, these bags only fit someone up to six foot four. Anybody who was taller than that could have applied to get an extra tall sleeping bag. And I've never even seen one. They're rare. You're probably not going to find one, but you might, one might show up in a bin. So you might see one of them too. There have been three different sleeping pads issued with the Canadian Forces sleep system over its lifetime. Uh, we're going to go through them all chronologically. The first mat we're looking at is a black rubber pneumatic air mattress that came into service at least as early as the 1970s and was still in use up to at least 2004 when I stopped using mine. Hope you guys can read that okay. That says Uniroyal Limited and it's dated December 1974. And this mat is still serviceable today in 2021. These bags were in service for decades and were generally pretty popular with the troops. They were durable, they were comfortable. Uh, the only real downsides, they were a little bit on the narrow side, so they were easy to roll off of, and they're a little bit heavy at about three pounds. They had a very rudimentary valve for filling with an attached rubber plug and an inflation bag attached to it that came with instructions uh, in case you were an idiot. If you're buying a Canadian Forces sleep system, you do not have to buy this mat to go with it. You can use whatever sleeping mat you already own or any off the shelf one's gonna work fine too. If you do wanna buy these, uh, it'd be important to note, inspect the whole thing for overall condition. Make sure this inflator bag's in good shape. You do kinda need that. It takes a long time to inflate one of these by mouth. Uh, you're not gonna know if it has any little pinholes in it unless you inflate it overnight. So that's gonna be a bit of a guessing game. Uh, they were issued with a patch kit, which was literally like a, a patch and a little thing of glue, like you'd inner tube, uh, repair an inner tube for a bicycle. You can use a regular bicycle inner tube patch kit to repair this too. That'll work fine. Uh, one important point to note is that because there's just air in this mat, uh, it doesn't give you any insulation in the cold. So if you did want to use this in the winter, I would add something like Reflectix or a Z-Lite or a wool blanket to it to give you some insulation off the ground. 
Around the year 2000, the CF started issuing a Thermarest style air mattress with the sleep system. Uh, it was commonly known as the Thermarest or the green one or the Mustang mat. We'll talk about that in a second. Came in a green carrier and just had a little bit of webbing on the side so you could hang it off your ruck. Let's have a look at it. So what we have here is a supposedly self-inflating air mattress, just like a Thermarest. Uh, it has a valve in the corner you can open. It has a layer of foam in it that is supposed to inflate it for you. Uh, the instructions in it say it might not inflate itself if it's been stored for a long time or if it's extremely cold outside, which is pretty much every time you use it. As you can see, this is called the Mustang mat because it is made by Mustang Survival, the same company that makes the uh, survival suits for cold water immersion. When it won't inflate itself, uh, the carrier bag is actually used as an inflator. It has a valve on the bottom of it. We can connect to the bag and use that to force air into it. Uh, you're told to do this instead of blowing air in with your mouth, so you're not introducing moisture inside the mat. Ugh. It helps if you spit on it first. Ugh. This takes way longer than the black one. The advantages that the Mustang mat have over the original Black Betty are that it's slightly lighter at between two and two and a half pounds, and that it actually has some foam insulation in it, which gives you some thermal protection in the cold. The disadvantage of these mats are that they are considerably thinner at only about an inch and a half thick. So on rough ground, they're not gonna give you as comfortable a night's sleep. And that they're considerably less durable. Uh, my Black Betty is 47 years old. I guarantee you none of these are gonna last 47 years. When buying these from a surplus store, all you're gonna be able to do is inspect them for overall condition. There could be pinholes in these you're never gonna be able to detect without you know, submerging it in water or waiting overnight. Uh, something to watch for though is just like on a Thermarest, where the hard valve body here connects to the fabric, you'll get a lot of little cracks and tears in here. Have a good look at this spot. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that these valves fail. I think I actually hear this one leaking. Uh, they are replaceable. It is a replaceable part but I can't find anywhere you can buy them from Mustang Survival and a regular Thermarest valve does not fit in there. Once again, you can usually pick these up from the surplus stores for 20 bucks, but you might just be better off sticking with a regular Thermarest. Some of my connections in the Canadian Army tell me they're now getting issued an Army version of the Thermarest Z-Lite. It is, looks identical in every way, except instead of bright colors and reflective, it's like a dull gray in a green. Uh, they're not even on the surplus market yet. I couldn't get my hands on one for this video, but I'm including it because I assume in the next five or 10 years, they're gonna start showing up on the surplus market. The next piece of gear on our list is probably the most favored, and that is the Canadian Forces Sleep System Gore-Tex Bivy Bag. Uh, some have called this one of the best pieces of kit the Canadian Army has ever issued. This is a simple, well-designed, and well-made piece of kit. Uh, it was intended to have the sleeper and the entire sleep system inside of it, it doesn't have any other hardware or zippers on it aside from just a drawstring at the head. While this is referred to as a Gore-Tex bivy bag and it did seem to be breathable, according to the information I did, it's not actually made of Gore-Tex. It is made from a Gore-Tex-like fabric. So as I said, these were well-liked by the troops. Uh, they will keep you protected from the elements in even just the most rudimentary of a shelter. Uh, depending on the surplus store you go to, they may or may not include this with the base sleeping bag that I already showed you, or you may have to buy this separately. I don't know if you guys can make out how many repairs I've done on mine. I've slept uh, too close to the fire in it a few times. Uh, tenacious tape or a little bit of duct tape or a little dab of silicone works just fine. Makes these easily repairable. This is a really great piece of gear and it was popular with the soldiers. But to be honest with you guys, I don't use mine very much. Uh, this bag weighs almost two pounds and you still need some kind of overhead to protect your face uh, because it's exposed to the elements. You can't zip this right up over your head. So once you add in a one pound tarp, to the two pound bivy bag at three pounds, you're in for the weight of a tent. And at that point, I'd, I'd probably choose just to have the tent. So it is a good piece of gear to have for some situations, but I don't use it all the time. There is a new piece of this sleep system yet I haven't covered. I'm gonna show it to you guys in a minute, but before we get there, we gotta have a little quick talk. Probably the most commonly asked question about the sleep system is, what is it rated for? Well, I kid you not, if you go to a Google search bar right now and type in Canadian Forces sleeping bag, it'll autofill rating with a question mark. That's what everybody wants to know because there was no rating listed on these bags. We can do some math and figure that out ourselves. So I told you guys that the inner and outer sleeping bags were almost identical and they're each about five pounds. So if you look at civilian sleeping bags, on a goose down sleeping bag, normally half of its weight is the goose down, the other half is nylon. So we could assume that each of these bags are about two and a half pounds a down. You put them together, that gives you a five pound down fill. If you look at bags on the market that have five pounds of goose down in them, 
they're rated well down into the negative 40 Celsius. As much as buying a sleep system rated for negative 50 Celsius sounds great, you guys got to keep in mind that as I carried the system out here today, I had the Gore-Tex bivy bag, the outer bag, the inner bag, the liner, the hood, and the black pneumatic air mattress packed inside my valise. It weighed 18 and a half pounds, which is an insane weight for a sleep system. Most of us are not camping in the Arctic. Most of the time, even in winter camping, you're at neg negative 10 or negative 20, maybe negative 30 Celsius. So we don't need to carry all of this all winter long. So it was quite common in the army to just carry the pieces you're gonna need for the weather you're expecting. So what that usually meant was guys would carry just a single sleeping bag with the hood and the air mattress, and they would discard the cotton liner and buy a, a civilian fleece liner off the shelf, a generic one from a camping store. So this was sufficient to cover most Canadian soldiers in the winter here in Canada, provided they weren't way up north. We just discussed that it's been very common for Canadian soldiers to discard the cotton liner out of the sleeping bag system in favor of buying a synthetic liner that was a lot warmer. And this would allow them to only have to carry one of the two sleeping bags. Apparently somebody in the army was actually paying attention to this because our soldiers are getting some new equipment. Check this out. So this is the new CF issue Ranger blanket. So this is identical in dimensions to a US Army Ranger blanket. It has tie outs in the corner to be used as a poncho liner. And it's obviously it's printed in the new CAD pat pattern. So this differs from an American Ranger blanket in that it actually has a zippered neck hole so it can be worn with the poncho. This also differs from the American Ranger blanket in that it already has a zipper around its perimeter so it can be zipped up into a sleeping bag or as a replacement for the cotton sleeping bag liner. It even has a simple drawstring at its neck so you can do it up around the sleeping bag hood. There are no tags anywhere on this blanket, but for what I'm told, this is made with ClimaShield Apex insulation, which would make it an awesome piece of gear. Unfortunately, the CADPAT poncho liners are not surplus and they're not released to the public. We're not allowed to have them. This has been our look at the components of the Canadian Forces sleep system, uh, past, present, and future. So if you're in the market for a sleep system, I hope you found this informative. I hope it gave you the information you need to go out and make an informed purchase. We are working on a DIY project right now to use some of these components to make a budget winter sleep system. Uh, when that's ready, I'm going to include a link to it at the end of this video. I want to thank you guys for watching today. I hope you found this informative. And as usual, until next time, go outside. YouTube will be here when you get back.